Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and today I'm excited to bring you this video. It has been much requested. We're gonna have a little bit of fun with the teacups stamp set. And I have had multiple requests on how to mask off this set. So you can see this teacup set right here. It's got some great images, a larger teacup, some lights and banners and flags. There are also available coordinating dies for this set. But sometimes the masking gets a little tricky. Here's the first card I ever made with this set. And you can see the Mad Hatter on the left and Alice on the right. And in this set, what is so cool is that these characters were made to fit on a specific side of the card. But if you want to put them in a different area of the teacup, then you have to do a little bit of creative masking, which I'm gonna show you today or I'm also going to teach you a way around that if you don't like masking. So we're gonna have a lot of fun. <laughs> I love this set so much. And I wanted to show you here on this actual set on the acetate, it says left and right. So it tells you where the characters belong and how they will fit in the teacup. You don't always have to follow that if you don't want because there's a way to make them fit anywhere you want in the teacup. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first take the teacup and we're gonna get it ready to stamp. I'm using the Misty and I'm using the left side of the Misty so that I can use the right side for the other part of the stamping and masking. And I'm going to use a pencil to just draw out the top and the bottom lines of just a few of these lines here, but mostly I want the rim of that teacup so I know where that's gonna fall. Now, I have never stamped with a pencil before. I learned this from Heidi, the owner of Missing Stamps, and I thought it was brilliant. And so I don't know if you can see that. I have exaggerated how many times I stamped with the pencil, so hopefully you can see it in the video but it is still very hard to see. But what you're interested in is just knowing where that teacup rim is going to stamp so you know where to mask. So I'm gonna put Alice in the center of the teacup. Instead of putting her on the right where she was designed to go, I want her in the very center. So I'm just gonna kinda take a look and see where is she going to stamp over that, that teacup edge and what I'm going to do is do a little creative masking with some washi tape. So all I'm gonna do is washi tape over the edge so that Alice doesn't stamp below where that teacup edge is. This is really easy to do. And now I'll take my Memento ink and stamp that down. And the washi tape is going to prevent it from stamping where the teacup is going to stamp. Now I'm also going to create a mask of Alice with some masking magic. And so I'll keep that in the Misty and stamp it on that masking magic. And then I can go ahead and cut this out and put it over Alice. But I did cut it a little bit short so that the teacup rim would still stamp. Now I hope this is already making sense to you. So now that we have Alice masked off, we can stamp that teacup and it's going to stamp perfectly in front of her and behind her, but since we have her mask off, it's not going to stamp through her. Once we take the mask off, you'll see she will be perfect. So there's our stamping. Now I can remove that Alice mask, and look here, it's perfect. And her little hand is in front of the teacup, but the rest of her is behind on the inside of the teacup, so it's really simple to do it this way. And if you have some extra pencil marks that are still showing through, just take an eraser and erase those. And there is your perfect stamping. Now I want to show you one more time, but this time, and I'm, by the way, I'm going to keep this mask because you can reuse these masks over and over until they stop sticking. So I always keep my masks, but I'm going to show you one more time. This time we'll use the Queen of Hearts and the White Rabbit. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this pencil stamping trick. Now in real life, I can see this, but in the video, 
it's going to be a little tricky to see. That's why I'm stamping it multiple times with a pencil. So you can hopefully see that faint line there, but that's going to show me where the teacup is going to be. And I leave everything in my Misty, so I'm going to get this lined up perfectly. And now I'm going to put the Queen of Hearts on the left side where the stamp set says and the White Rabbit on the right side. And they fit perfectly along that curve of the cup. So this time we don't have to use washi tape to mask it because I am putting them where they were originally intended to go. And then I will also create a mask for them, cut that out, and then we can mask those critters and stamp the teacup. So I'm just removing the backs of the mask, just like so, putting that right over the queen of hearts and then adding the white rabbit right here. And the reason we want to mask them off is because we don't want that entire teacup line to stamp through our images. We want to protect them. So now I'll go ahead and stamp the teacup. And this time, let's go ahead and make an entire card panel out of this. So because I already have the queen masked and the white rabbit masked, I'm going to go ahead and create a mask for that teacup. So this way we can cover everything up and we can do some creative stenciling in the background. I think that sounds really fun. So I went ahead, cut out the mask for the antique cup, and now all of the things are masked on here. So I'm gonna take this perspective floor stencil and I'm gonna use the one in the center here. I will put this on my grip mat and there we go, attach that down and then I'll add some inking. I'm gonna use some iced spruce on this one. This is Distress Ink and that's gonna create our floor. But since our teacup is masked off, it's going to protect that teacup as well. And now Missing has a variety of really awesome stencils that you could use, that you could choose. That's the Harlequin stencil and the Alice background pack stencil set. This one here is the pick a card stencil with the new layers. Well, this stencil, the one I'm going to use, it has been updated with layers. So it's even easier to add your hearts and diamonds and and clovers and spades in the different colors so i decided to use that one today but there's also the alice background pack the harlequin stencil the diamond fade stencil there's lots you could choose from they're so beautiful today i kind of have saint patrick's day on my mind which is why i called those clubs clovers <laughs> so i'm going to use those as clovers today and ink them up green using some peeled paint ink. This is a beautiful green, kind of a, a darker shade of green. So I'll ink on just those clovers, and then I'm gonna add the hearts, because of course we have to have hearts with the queen of hearts as part of our, our card panel today. So I'll go ahead and bring in some lumberjack plaid. Lumberjack plaid is a beautiful dark red color and I think that'll be perfect for our hearts. So you can see I'm inking up the line of hearts and then I've got those clovers already done. So once I finish up this line of hearts, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the stencil. So I also have hearts on the other side of those clovers. I'm not using all four of those suits today. I'm just going to be using hearts and clovers. And I think it's fun to use your stencils in another way. It really stretches the use of them. So again, you don't have to use all of them, but it does look very cute with the diamonds and the spades as well. Again, I will switch the stencil up and line that up once again so that I can add the clovers between those rows of hearts. So in order to do this, I am lining up the spades with the previously inked clovers, and that will adjust it just enough so that I can put the clovers in between the hearts. And there's our background. Look how cute that is, and it's really fun. I am going to create a sentiment to go with this specifically. So I'm peeling off the masks, and when I peeled off the teacup mask, it also peeled up the queen of hearts and the white rabbit. 
So I'll save those masks once again. So definitely save that teacup mask because we're going to use it again today as well. I also wanted to point out that you can use any of these masking techniques and this pencil stamping technique for any of the characters in the Alice collection or anything you want to put inside a teacup, really. So I thought it would be fun to use the March Hare from a previous stamp set. This is from the Tea Party stamp set. And I haven't used the March Hare very much at all, but I'm just gonna ink up the top portion of him and use my washi tape trick for masking off the teacup rim. So I only am stamping the top portion of him and masking off the rim. So it's going to look like he's sitting inside of that teacup. So this is really fun to do with any character that you want. I'll peel off the masks of those washi tapes and then add the mask of the white rabbit. And it, or I'm sorry, this is the March Hare. And I, I only cut the top portion of his mask, of course, because I want the teacup to stamp all around him and behind him. So there we go. I thought it was so cute. The March Hare is holding a teacup. <laughs> so he's holding a teacup and sitting inside of a teacup <laughs> at the same time. Really, really fun. Now I'm gonna use that teacup mask that we already made and we already used for the Queen of Hearts and White Rabbit card. And I'm going to mask over this teacup as well so we can do some creative stenciling for this guy as well. Now, before on the perspective floor, I used those square tiles. And this one time, I think I'll use the cobblestone tiles. Really fun to do in different colors as well. So I'm gonna pull in some Uncharted Mariner for this flooring. There we go. And then while the masks are still on, I'll pull in the wonky checker stencil to do the background. And I'm just gonna do kind of a light Alice blue color background. This is speckled egg distress ink. I'm just gonna put it on rather lightly, but it's going to just bring in that feeling of Alice. I love that stencil. I think it's so fun. So there we go. There's the panel for the March hair for the Queen of Hearts and the White Rabbit and for Alice. And I'm just gonna go ahead and color all these off screen because I do know this video is getting a little bit long, but I wanted to show you that I'm gonna stamp on the flag and the light banners for the Alice. And I also chose a sentiment from the Tea Party stamp set that says, would you like an adventure now or shall we have tea first? Now here's another masking trick for you. I saved the outline of when we cut out that teacup mask from before. And the outline is going to protect around the teacup. So we can color this teacup up with ink instead of Copic markers. And it's so fast and so easy. Now you can see I created a little bit of a mask for inside that teacup handle. So that's there. And then I'm using some saltwater taffy to color up this teacup. I thought it was kind of a fun color, kind of a corally reddish pink for this teacup image. And I'm just gonna ink up with a smaller brush around the saucer and on the inside of that teacup, just a little bit for a little bit of shadowing. And there we go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take a Copa marker and just color the stripes. So the stripe on the teacup and the stripe around the bottom of that teacup. And that's all we're gonna do as far as coloring. So you can see this was really fast and as I peel this off, you'll see it's a nice light shading of the teacup. So I'm gonna use the same mask as many times as I can. <laughs> and let's color the next one up. And again, I'll put that center piece right in there. I just kind of eyeballed that one, cutting it out of some low tack tape. And you can see it wants to keep coming up on me, but that's okay, we'll put it back down. <laughs> and this one I'm gonna do some green, and so we're, we'll use some mowed lawn for this teacup. And same thing, I'm gonna take a Copic marker in a darker shade and just do the stripes. So I'll do the stripe on the teacup and the stripe around the bottom of that teacup. That's it. Very simple, very fast to color up this way. 
and when you mask around the edge, it creates the perfect coloring. Now I can take the coordinating dies and cut this out. And this is such a great shortcut for those of you that don't like masking off for stamping. You can go ahead and use the coordinating dies and any images that you want. For this one, I wanted those legs of the flamingo to stick outside of the cup. So I'm just gonna cut right there so the legs can be on the outside. And she's holding her little croquet flamingo. This is from the croquet stamp set. So I've cut, cut and colored up some images all ready to fit inside these, these teacups. But I am gonna have to do some leg surgery for these guys in order to make them fit. The Tweedledee and Tweedledum needed to be just a little thinner to fit in there, but by cutting off a few pieces, it was able to work. And I'm so sorry, D, that I had to take your leg for this. Sometimes a little card surgery is necessary. So now let me show you all the cards. I did color and create them off screen. I used the bread and butterflies from the wildflower set to sprinkle around this card. I colored Alice in some light pastel colors and I used the brick perspective floor stencil for that flooring, stippling on some white and some darker ink to make it look more like bricks. Now here's the one with the queen of hearts and the white rabbit. I created a very dramatic coloring on them to stand out from the background. And I did create my own sentiment using the EIEIO frame die alpha that says take luck. And then uh, the sub sentiment says people who don't think shouldn't talk. And that is from the Wonderland Wisdom stamp set. Now the take luck is kind of a joke from Brian Regan. It's a combination of take care and good luck. And it kind of came together as take luck. It's kind of a joke in our family. And also I think you do need to take luck when you're talking to the Queen of Hearts. Now here's the one with the March hair. And I used the Unbirthday stamp set to stamp that sentiment in a dark blue. I also stamped some of those cupcakes onto the tea cup. And the cupcakes are from the Tea Party stamp set. So you can use any stamps you want on that teacup. And I think that looks so cute. Here's the die cut croquet Alice. I used more of the images from the croquet set for the teacup and for the little hedgehogs. And then that frame is so fun. It is from the high swirl frame die. And I think this ribbon just really kind of looks like a tea party to me. <laughs> the background is that Alice background pack, and that's a multi-step stencil as well. And then we have our Tweedledee and Tweedledum and that Dodo bird. <laughs> this background is a background I created in a video before, probably from last year. If I can find it, I will link it. I, I thought it was so funny to have a flamingo standing on top of that Dodo bird. <laughs> and then these are the teacups that we die cut. So there was no masking. You can just slip your characters right in without worrying about any masking. That sentiment, Dodo to be a stranger, is also from the Dodo stamp set. Now here's another teacup I have ready to go. I was a little bit extra with that ink blending, but I will fix that up. Before I use that, it's ready to go for another card. And here's the first card I created with the teacup stamp set. I hope I gave you plenty of inspiration and also that you were able to understand how to do some creative masking if you wanna do some one layer cards and stamping. But if you don't, then be sure to pick up the coordinating dies because it is so simple to just slip them in whichever images you want and all so fun to create. I really had a great time with this video and if you're still here all the way to the end then thank you so much for sticking around i'll be back real soon with more cards to share be sure to give this video a thumbs up it really helps us out and we'll see you soon bye bye